Welcome back to my basement. Uh, this is actually the room where uh, my stepson Cal lived for a while and uh, he moved out and uh, this is sort of a little band practice room that uh, my son Josh and I mess around with. Um, but for now I'm recording my interviews down here and uh, my first question for this particular episode is from Michael Lindsay in England and he asks uh, in my opinion what is the best song I've recorded in my career and why um, well I've got a couple of them my two favorite ones are Jake Break from uh, Vice Grip Throttle and then uh, the Endless from All That Crawls, which uh, the video is being worked on right now for that. Um, it's funny, neither of them are exactly the style of music that I'm doing in Pain Face by any means, but uh, the recordings to me were exceptional compared to what I'd been used to. I was very, very happy with Jake Break. Uh, I mean, all the way around, guitars, drums, bass, everything just to me sounded great, and that was that was recorded by uh, Kevin Neal um, at Red Seven Studios here in Des Moines, and uh, the Endless was recorded by him too. That was just an acoustic song, and it, it's um, you know, it's an emotional song to me because it it's I've dedicated it to the memory of Paul, and. Uh, so that one's always going to be a memorable one, and I can't wait for it to be done so we can uh, we can show it to you and uh, so forth. So, thank you, Michael. This one comes from uh, Ryan Flynn from New Jersey, uh, and he asks. Um, he was asking me about Body Pit, and he just listened to the song Infestation and. Uh, he was curious if there, is there more from that band or was that just a short project? Uh, we did that for two or three years. Uh, we never actually made a formal recording because uh, you know doing the band member swap and, and whatnot. We were trying constantly trying to find somebody to fill some position and I spent a lot of time playing drums during practices instead of actually doing vocals because we didn't have a drummer for a long time. Um, so uh, I've got two live videos of shows that we did and we are piece by piece at end time going to be releasing more of those clips from for different songs but uh, um, that's about it from Body Pit you know we, we had a lot of fun with it um, you know Mick ended up in the band towards the end of it and Danny Spain was our drummer at the very end of it also who also uh, played in uh, Pain Face, Down the Sun, and a number of other things. But, um, you know, that's about it for Body Pit. It's too bad. It was a blast. Uh, here's another question from Diego Zavalos, who I, he asked me a question a while back, and um, he's from uh, Lima, Peru. He asks, uh, was it difficult to bring all the percussion stuff into the Safari Club for a gig? Uh, yeah, but it was even harder bringing Joey's drum set in with his rack and everything that was uh, we usually had that thing all set up before we even left our practice place to go to the shows um, it, it, it wasn't too difficult to bring everything in we'd usually have that all ready to go someplace and um, and what what are the things that Sean uses in his percussion um, we use beer kegs, propane, empty propane tanks, uh, anything that made noise when you beat on it with a stick. Um, springs, uh, you know, uh, he used a chop saw to shoot sparks all over the place for a while. But um, anyway, thank you very much, Diego. Now this song is coming from Jan, from Germany. And Jan asks uh, a couple of questions here. Who is John Green? I think I read he was a fake ex-member, but I'm not sure. I have no idea who John Green is. Never, never heard of that before, so that's a new one to me. Um, and also, what did Quan Meld Nong do in Slipknot? Quan, uh, I don't know why he's being given the uh, quotations meld, but 
uh, he didn't have anything to do with Meld. Uh, Quan played guitar in Slipknot in the very beginning when Sean and I started gathering musicians to to put together. Um, we got him involved, got Paul to come back from LA to, to work on it actually. He had, I think, decided he was done with the Des Moines music scene and moved out to LA or was out there visiting and thinking about staying. But <coughs> I called him and said, come back. And he said, okay, only if you guys are serious. All right. Uh, so Quan, he played guitar for a little bit and then Donnie came in. I think Quan uh, realized that the intricate metal style we were going into wasn't something he was exactly comfortable with and you know uh, he, Quan's an in, incredible guitar player but he just plays differently. He's a different style player so um, that's what he did in the band. So thank you for from uh, to Jan from Germany. Now here's another question from Peru. This is from Victor Hugo Mahia Quispe. I hope so. Anyway, uh, hello Andrews writing here from Peru. Tell me about the song Slipknot from MFKR when the band wrote the lyrics and what was the concept about that song? Um, well, I wrote the lyrics to that. That was uh, all based on my. Uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse role-playing game uh, from the uh, opinion of a member of the Get of Fenris, which is a particularly mean, savage tribe that uh, um, is sort of like the Vikings of the of the werewolf culture. Uh, they would just storm in and just tear everything to shreds and loot and pillage and all that. And they... You know, if you're a Star Trek fan, they're the Klingons of the uh, of the werewolf world. Just go in there and destroy everything. And they hate a lot of things. And that's what that song was about. Slipknot, the title itself didn't really have anything to do with the rest of the song. I don't exactly know why I came up with that as a title for the song, to be honest with you. Um, sometimes uh, my, the titles of my songs have nothing to do with the lyrics. It's just whatever comes to the you know comes to mind at the time so and obviously it worked out just fine for Slipknot <laughs> um, but uh, yeah it, it, it's just about things from that game that that particular character didn't like and um, you know they're a, a get a Fenris werewolf is kind of a kind of like the big dumb guy who who uh, wants to smash everything before he thinks about it so you know it was kind of done with that sort of uh, you know way of comprehending it you know just uh, kind of a, the dumb werewolf guy <laughs> spitting out stupid words but uh, that's that's all there was to it for that particular song um, and most of that that album was about the very same things or different aspects of those role-playing games you know some feel was from the from the viewpoint of a, of a vampire from the vampire the masquerade thing so anyway um that's it for this particular session keep sending me questions uh no matter how silly mundane or extravagant they are i'll answer almost everything unless i've already answered them uh too many times or if you ask me questions about what's my opinion on this person or that person so Keep sending them to anderscolesafney at gmail.com. And uh, uh, we are posting these on Wednesdays and Sundays. So uh, check out uh, the next uh, episode coming up next Wednesday. Actually, there's one coming up uh, this coming Sunday first. So anyway, you guys have a great week, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Anders out.